future will not be 122, maybe we can prolong our life to 130 or 150 years. This possibility has inspired the researcher Dr. David Sinclair, who now co-director a lab at Harvard Medical School and has become a world leader in life expansion. Uh, evolutionary speaking, we only live as long as we need to to replace ourselves efficiently. Uh, if you're a mouse, you're only going to live two and a half years, three years. You're probably going to die of starvation, predation, freezing in the winter. So they, they di divert most of their resources to reproducing rapidly, but they don't put a lot of energy into preserving their soma, which is their body. Conversely, a baleen type of whale, a bowhead whale in particular, will live hundreds of years because they're at the top of the food chain and they can live as long as they want. So they breed slowly and build a body that lasts. We're somewhere in between because we've, you know, we've really only just come out of the savannas where we could be picked off by a cat. We were pretty wimpy going back six million years ago. Uh, so we're, we, we actually need to evolve quicker than evolution will. And that's why we can use our oversized brains and intuition to give us what evolution not only didn't give us, but took away from us. You know, we're, we're pathetic. Look at our bodies. Mm -hmm. These arms, if, if any of us, even the strongest person in the world went in a cage with a chimpanzee, the chimp could knock that person's head off, no question. Yeah. So we're pathetic. So we need to engineer ourselves to be healthier and longer lived. So getting to aging, uh, we, we can do better, right? Whales do way better. We're trying to learn how whales do that. And if you ask really anybody in the field now, professor, they'll say there are eight or nine hallmarks of aging, which are really, it's a its a word for causes of aging. So that you probably have heard of some of these, your listeners will have uh, loss of telomeres, the ends of the chromosomes, like the little uh, ends of um, shoelaces, that kind of thing. They get too short, cells stop dividing, become senescent. They, they become, um, they put out what are called mitogens that cause cancer and inflama inflammatory molecules. So that's another aspect of aging cellular senescence. Another one is loss of the energetics, so mitochondria, the battery packs, wind down. Uh, there's a whole bunch, stem cells, uh, proteostasis. Well, these are our Achilles heels that I'm talking about yeah. that are common amongst all life forms, really. But if you want me to jump to the chase as to where, what is the upstream defining factor? If we boil it down, what do we get? So most biologists would say you can't boil it down. It's too complex. I would say you can boil it down to an equation, which is the preservation of information and loss due to entropy, i.e. noise. Uh, and that is the basis of my research. Uh, it originally came out of discoveries in yeast cells, where we'll, I went to MIT in the 1990s. You studied bread. I kind of did. I studied <laughs> the, uh, the makers of bread, a uh, little yeast called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which at the time was one of the hottest, excuse the pun, uh, organisms to work on. Yes. But they, we, we figured out in the lab why yeast cells get old and found genes that control that process and made them live longer, which was an, an amazing four years of my life. One of those genes had a name with an acronym SIR2. Now, the 2 is irrelevant. The SIR is important, and the most important letter out of all of those three is I, which stands for information. Silent information regulator number two when you put more copies of that gene in, just put in one more copy, the yeast cells live 30% longer and suppress the cause of aging, which was the dysregulation of information in the cell. And then, so fast forward to now, I've been looking in humans and mice, because they live shorter and cheaper to study, whether loss of information in our bodies is a root cause of aging. And I think it is. He's attempting to change the clock and see what happens. In a study published in uh, December last year, he turned on embryotic genes that had been silenced in old mice. The mice were blind. Can you reset use those genes to reset the age of the eye? And if you do, that does anything happen? The mice got their vision back. Professor Dr. Sinclair suggested that this kind of genetic tinkering could also work in humans. Right. So that we have some information regulator genes in our bodies. We have seven of them, uh, SIRT1 through 7, they're called. And we found in, in mice 
one way to slow down the loss of inflammation is to just give more of these um, to upregulate these genes. Mm -hmm. So we, we made a mouse that has more of this SIRT1 gene, turned it on, and that slowed down the aging of the brain and preserved their information. Now, what information am I talking about, you might ask? Well, again, you can simplify biology. There are two types of information in the cell primarily. The one we all read about and know about is the DNA, the genome, and that's base four uh, information, ATCG, the four chemicals that make up the various sequences of the genome, billions of letters. Uh, and that also degrades over time. But what's been fascinating is that we find that that information is pretty much intact in old animals and people. You can clone a dog. One of my friends in LA just cloned his dog three times. So th this is doable, right? It means that the genome can be intact. But what's the other type of information? It's the epigenome, the regulators of the genetic information. And physically, that's really just how the DNA is wrapped up or looped out for the cell to access it and read it. So it's similar to, and excuse this analogy, but it's a good one, um, a compact disc or a DVD. Those pits in the foil are the digital information, that's the genome. And the epigenome is the reader of that information. And in a, in a different cell, you read different music, different songs, different symphonies. Uh, and that's what gets laid down when we're in the womb and that gives makes a skin skin cell forever a skin cell and not a brain cell tomorrow thank god otherwise our brains wouldn't work very well but over time what we see is that the brain cells start to look more like skin cells hmm. and the kidney cells start to look more like liver cells um, and they what we call x differentiate this is a term that we use in my lab but isn't yet uh, widely used but we needed a term to explain this and that those that process of x differentiation the loss of the reader of the the cd or the dvd uh, we liken that to scratches on the DVD so that the reader cannot fully access the information. Now, we can slow down the scratches, as I mentioned. We can turn on these genes. We can even put in molecules into the cell or, or even eat them uh, and turn on those pathways, which, which my father and I have been trying to do for about a decade to slow things down. But the question that I've had is, is there a repository of information still in the body? because anyone who knows anything about the loss of information or even has tried to copy a cassette tape or photocopy or Xerox anything knows that over time you you lose that information irreparably. So I've been looking for a backup copy, inspired largely by Claude Shannon's work at MIT as well in the 1940s. Um, his uh, theory, mathematical theory of communication is just brilliant. And so I've been looking for what he called the observer, mm -hmm. which is the backup copy. We today might call that the TCPI protocol TCP IP protocol of the internet that stores information in case it doesn't make it to your computer, mm. it will fill in the gaps. And we've been spending about the last five years to try and find if there really is a backup copy in the body to reset the epigenome and polish those scratches away. There are at least two dozen companies around the world developing medicines that could either slow down or in same case reverse the age of organs and perhaps one day the entire body. Harvard professor of genetics, uh, David Sinclair, revealed that the genetic reset trail will begin in 2023 and it could help humans live beyond their current average lifespan. I'm so optimistic that we are going into human study in less than two years from now. Edward Sinclair. Okay, what are we going to do for the next 100 or 2000 years? Watch TV or something? Unless life has some kind of additional purpose or shape or meaning, and definitely might not be the most desirable prospect. And now let's return to Dr. Sinclair, Professor Sinclair, interview. The important point here is that I'm not telling you that we're all going to live forever, but I, what I can tell you today is that we have the know-how now to make people live longer and importantly healthier lives. Okay, That's really important because there's no point extending lifespan if we're not going to be healthier. Most of the world is, is aging rapidly and this is actually one of the biggest challenges on the planet. It's as big a problem for the economy, world economy as global warming. And what I hope to make the case today is that not only will this help individuals 
and the economy, but this is also going to help the planet because saving trillions, eventually tens of trillions of dollars in healthcare costs at the end of life by compressing it down into a very short period, let's say a month of illness, will free up money across the planet that can be used to save species and protect the planet the way I think we would all agree is important. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe, put notification bell, comments below, and see you next video.